So, hello and welcome back to my C++ tutorial playlist. This video I just want to dedicate to show you how easy it is to work with modern C++. C++ is usually known to be hard and low level and I want to show you in this video that is really not the case anymore in modern C++, that we have nice abstractions and everything for a lot of things that we usually want to do. And for that reason I want to extend the code that we wrote last video for a function that renames files for us in bulk. And for that we first need some imports that we are going to use. And for that we want to use string. As you can see we are placing them inside the module fragment so they are not part of the, of the module itself. This helps us to avoid a lot of problems that are usually caused by mixing modules and headers, but I won't go into detail here into that because in the future we will only use headers, but modules are the future and once they are properly supported everywhere, then you won't need to have these. You can just do import std and be done. For now this is just a workaround. So we already defined my module here. Usually what I like to do is to also create a namespace for the module. So let's do that here and we are going to name it the same as the module itself. Then to save us some typing, we are using a namespace alias. So that means whenever we type fs, we really mean std file system. But let's encapsulate that into the function that we want to export, which would be bulk rename, which takes in a string reference, which is the path to the folder which contains the files that we want to rename, put it inside of here. Then we can loop over every file inside of that directory. For that we need a for loop and we are go going to store the file for each iteration inside a variable called file. The type of that file is an auto reference. That means that the type of the file will be automatically determined and const just means that we won't be able to change that variable. Be aware that variable has nothing to do with the file itself. It's just means the entry in the file system that we want to loop over. And here in the file system, we have a convenient directory iterator. We can just use that to loop over every entry in our path. That's already it and already loops over every file that we have in the path. Now we need a few things. We need to get the file path. And for that, we can just call the path method on the directory entry that will give us the path. But of course we first need to check, I forgot about that, if we even have a regular file because especially on Linux everything is a file. So we could also have something like a printer or a system link or anything here really or a socket. So we need to check if it's a regular file and if it's a regular file then we can continue with our logic but we can also invert that if it's not a regular file, then we can just continue with the next entry. Then we also want to have the parent path. Parent path. So we go one directory up, then we want to get the file name. And here we can use stm, which is the file name without the extension. And then we also need the extension itself. And we also get that from the file path. And this will all only contain the extension. So this means the exe for an executable file or the PDF for a PDF file and so on. And with that information, we can now do our logic to rename the files. And let's show you how to do that. Let's create a new file name. And that's just, let's say, the file name that we already have and we will append something to it. Let's say this rocks. And then of course we need to append the extension again as a string. And this will also need to be converted as a string. The plus here just means concatenate. We could alternatively also use append if you like this way of writing code with chaining methods together. This would do the same thing. Let's format this a little bit nicer. Like this would be our new file name. And the new file path would then just be new file path equals to parent path slash new file name. 
like that. And this would be our new file path. And with that, we can just rename it with the rename method. And here we will enter our old file path and then our new file path. And because we have it in a loop, it will do it for every entry in this directory. And to be safe here, we should also annotate the variables we don't intend to change directly with a const. And with that, we already would have our code. Let's see how we would use it. Import my module. This is still right. We have removed the greeting, so this won't work anymore. We can now just write my module. Remember, we have created a namespace. And then inside of that namespace, we have bulk rename, and this takes in a path. And this path is not defined yet, so we would need to define it. And I would like to read it in from the user. Also, we didn't make the string and everything part of our module, so we need to include it again. Also, what we would also need is the IO stream to read something into that string from the user. And also we want to like to display some usage information, so we need to include print to print stuff to the screen. So let's say we want to prompt the user to enter their path. And afterwards, we can just use C in, and that's already it. Here, nothing has changed. We still use my module and main, so we can compile it. And it has compiled. Now we can execute our program again. It is in build now, and it's called hello. And as we can see here, it prompts us for a path that we want to rename things in. So let's create a path here. Let's call this files. And inside of here, let's create hello txt, maybe game.txt, and maybe a readme.pdf, like that. So we will enter the path right here, just call it files, and Look into here and see if it works. And it looks like it worked. Now the files have all been renamed. Let's run it again to make the file names even longer. As you can see, our little program works pretty well. And this really hasn't been too much work or it, we didn't have to interface with any low level API from the file system or anything to do with pointers or anything. We were just able to use standard C++ without any libraries and we have a lot more functionality in the standard library that we will go over in the following videos. I just want to show you that C++ isn't too scary and that we have a lot of high-level abstractions that we can use and you really should use them. Yes, thank you for watching and with that, see you in the next video.